Hello, I'm Pete Baker here at WBOC's Historic Studio D. You're watching Delmarva Life. Pete's been playing music for a long time. Looking forward to hearing him today. Yes, yes, absolutely. He's going to be here in just a little while. Now, to move on, we often hear stories from all over the country of how animals are found being mistreated and sometimes even abandoned by their owners. And it's really hard to see and hear some of those stories. Yeah, but the truth is, stuff like that happens right here on Delmarva more often than you might think. Brian Spiros recently did a ride along with Delaware Animal Care and Control to find out what they encounter on a daily basis and what every animal owner should know when it comes to the care of their pets. Magnolia? Yes. All right, what kind of dog is it? Master Corporal Brian Lewis is a cruelty investigator with Delaware Animal Care and Control. His territory covers the Kent County area. He says the hardest part of his job is seeing people who don't care for their pets. When you talk to an owner, if the owner doesn't care and they have a dog that's emaciated outside and it's just, uh, I didn't have money to feed the dog, that's what irritates me. You know, and it, it, that hurts me the worst because they know they're, they're supposed to take care of the animal, but they just don't feel like it. So what exactly does he encounter when on the job? We recently did a ride along to find out and some of it you may find eye opening. I'll be en route to Magnolia area for a cruelty. Brian's first order of business involved a follow up with the owner of two dogs. A couple German Shepherds were emaciated and I uh, give him a little bit of time, but he hasn't responded back to me. So we're going to go out and check with him and, and check on the conditions of the animals. Brian says he came across the dogs and gave the owner a few days to get them to the vet and feed them. Going back for an update is not uncommon. Uh, people think that we go out and then we'll give them paperwork and oh, well, they're not going to come back. Well, we may wait a week, but we're trying to give them a chance. We're giving them a little extra time to get this taken care of. And then by the time they, we do go out, it's a surprise to them. We show up and you know they got a surprised look on their face. We didn't think you were coming back. Well, you know, that's what we do. That's our job. After arriving at the home, Brian noticed both German Shepherds tied up outside. He says they did look better than the last time he was there. He spoke with the owner who did not want to go on camera. He told Brian that he has been feeding the dogs more. Take some pictures of your mama. Yeah. Regardless of the improvement with the dogs, Brian still takes pictures to document the case. He did point out something positive here that every dog owner should be aware of when it comes to shelter for your pet. The dog house he's got out here is actually a pretty good dog house. It's a great size for the dog. He has plenty of room to get in, stand up, sit down comfortably. But it's also about what you put inside. Our main thing during the winter time, you want to have bedding. We always suggest straw or wood shavings. They're easy, they're thick, they're warm. Leave enough in there to the dog can basically bury itself underneath of it to stay warm. Some people put blankets in there. We don't recommend blankets because they absorb moisture. So if it rains outside, that blanket's going to absorb that moisture and then it's going to get cold and freeze. So it's really no good for that animal. And speaking of having a dog outside, Brian says owners need to realize every dog is different. If it's a chihuahua, short hair chihuahua, and it's 32 degrees outside, that's a big no-no. You don't want to put a dog out like that because they're not acclimated to that type of temperature. Um, and now if it's a husky in 32 degree weather, that's their breed. They're long hair, they got a thick fur, they can be kept outside. So the main thing is you want to know what kind of breed of dog you have, what kind of temperatures they can withstand. And vice versa, husky, they're in the middle of summertime, you can't leave it outside during the heat because it overheats. In the case of the German Shepherds, Brian says he'll keep coming back to check on their condition. In fact, that's a major part of his job. He also went to another home to check in on a few chihuahuas in this backyard. Hey. In this case, Brian was worried about the condition of the dog's pen, not to mention them being out in the cooler temperatures. He brought it to the attention of the owners and documented the matter. Do you have an ID on you so I can get your information for my report? While these types of situations are difficult for some people to see, Brian says it serves as a reminder that if you suspect animal cruelty is taking place, call your local animal control right away. If you see it, call it because it gets worse. It's not just a one-time thing. A lot of times, if somebody doesn't feed their dog one time, it's going to happen more often. Now that dog's going to suffer. Good boy. But Brian's Good job boy. deals with more than just cruelty. 
He also comes across dogs and cats that are lost or abandoned. The best thing is if people have the rabies tag and a license tag on the collar of a dog at all times. Um, by law, they're supposed to have a, a license at least is fixed to the collar and it should be on the dog. That's a very good identifier for us so we can actually relocate the owner of that animal. Um, also, we check microchip. We have scanners in the vehicles. As soon as we get on scene, we catch the dog. We scan it for a microchip. Brian explains that if there is no tag or microchip, the animal is brought back to the shelter. After it's given shots or vaccinations, the dog or cat is put on hold for three to five days in case the owner comes in. If not, the dog is eventually put up for adoption. So if your pet wanders off and you can't find him or her, Brian says call your local animal control. We always have a list of the animals in the system. We have a main database that's between both facilities. Um, call us right away, give us a description of the animal. If we do not have the animal, then you can file a loss report. Once they file the loss report, it gets put in our system. So if I go out and I pick up a foxhound, tricolor foxhound, I call into my dispatcher, give the description. They have, first, they're going to look through loss reports. If they find something that matches that description, they'll give me the owner's information. We'll contact them and return the dog to owner. Finally, think long and hard before you get a dog or cat. Brian says it's often the case where people think it's a great idea, but can't take care of it. Some people just take dogs. A guy down the street said, hey, you want this dog? Sure, I'll take it. They don't think it's a big deal. But it, like I said, it's a living thing. It needs to eat, needs to sleep and some people just don't realize that. So just be very prepared. That's the biggest thing I can tell people. Be prepared before you get that animal. If you can't afford it, then don't get an animal. Look at those eyes. Well, here's an update on the dogs we showed you in the story. Brian Lewis says the shepherd has picked up weight and keeps getting better. He adds the owner has gotten rabies shots for that dog, as well as the other dogs on the property. Also, the chihuahuas we saw in that one backyard, Brian says the owner has put a tarp over the kennel area and cleaned out the trash. Brian is also making sure they take the dogs inside when there's bad weather. It's stories like that, that that make me want to go out and adopt a cat or a dog. And if you're like me in that regard, well, there are many right here on Delmarva that would love to be a part of your family. And we're going to meet a few of them just a little bit later. But next, NFL playoff games this weekend mean many people are getting pumped to watch the showdowns with friends and family. We'll show you how to bring the spirit of the stadium inside your home. Plus, we're in the kitchen with some game day grub that's easy to make and won't pack on the pounds. Delmarva Life will be right back.